Britney Spears, The Woman in Me, uh, has finally been released. Yeah. It's a tell-all memo dealing with all sorts of bits that we think we know about, that we've seen her in, and all sorts of bits that we probably didn't know. You you spent a bit of time with her, didn't you? Yeah, I did, when, but right in the beginning. So I spent sort of a week and a half with her in Monaco, uh, making a programme all yeah. about life as Britney Spears. There's us on a boat uh, in Monaco. Oh. And she was... How young she What I remember been. so vividly is that she was so professional. Really? Because, oh, yeah, at the absolute consummate professional, because she'd been in the Disney world for a long time as a Disney yeah. cast member. And then, of course, coming to do a show with me, and it's actually, you know what I'm like, a little bit cheeky, a little bit, you know, like, come on then, Britney, tell me this, tell me that. But all the way through, she managed to keep a really professional way about her. And the other thing I really got the sense was she was a real sort of girl from the country. She was just the girl who got lucky and made it big. So back in those days, I mean, just the most calm and considered person, I'd, you know, who I'd worked with as a pop star. All right. Yeah. Well, look, with us now from Philadelphia is Britney's friend, very good friend, Sean Phillip, uh, who was there with Britney during some of her, her darkest moments. They lived together under the same roof for, for, for quite a while. Um, Sean, welcome to the programme and thanks for your time this morning. Yeah. Look, Britney is... Um, she's 41 now. She's been through so much. How old do you think she feels? I mean, we're the same age. Um, so I think she probably feels our, our age, which is 41, 42. Mm. But um, she's lived a life of 100 years, I think. Of 100 years. I agree with you. Just Reading looking the at the book, yeah. and I don't know whether you've had a chance to see it yet, we'll ask you about your feelings about it in a moment. She talks about how she was scared in the very opening pages, how she was scared growing up. Her mum and dad fought constantly. He was an alcoholic and she, her life inside the home was frightening. She says, mm. the, in the Bible, it says, your tongue is your sword. My tongue and my sword were my singing. Mm. I sang everywhere. It was spiritual to me. And when you think of that little girl, you know, for whom singing was a release, an escape, a powerful emotion, that then became this commercial entity, you saw her and were with her through some of the most intense times, weren't you? The somewhat infamous yes. moments when she shaved her head. Tell us about what that was like and the person you knew then. Uh, for me personally, I can speak of my own personal um, experiences with her. I did see a sad person. Um, I've gone through things in my own life, and I can only know how she can deal with her own personal sadness and frustrations and everything to do with the fame. And I was worried for her. I, I felt protective of her at the time. And... It wasn't a job anymore. It was it was protection of of a friendship kind of way, and that's how I felt during those crazy times. There was a critical moment, wasn't there, when you felt she needed help? You tried to persuade her to get professional help. In fact, I think you'd even driven her to a place that could be, and she you couldn't convince her well, to take that step. And then you called her father. Tell us about. At those times, that that night or few days. Okay, yes, this was um, shortly after the head shaving incident, and um, we were told that she was being sued by her ex-husband uh, Kevin Federline, and that we had to take her to a facility, or she had to go to a facility, and she agreed to do go to a facility, and we went. But she had to check herself in voluntarily. And um, when we finally got there, she didn't want to do it. And nobody could make her do it. So then we drove all the way back home, which is about a three-hour drive back to Los Angeles. And um, we just didn't know what to do at that point. What we, meaning so you, you we didn't know what to do for her, really? Yes. Yes. So, so you what called, did you, you do? The what did you do? You called her father in, Sorry, didn't you? It went out for a second. No, I know. We both spoke at once. You, you, yes, you called her father in. Yes, we called her father in. He lived nearby. Um, he came over, and um, we had a long discussion. It was a very emotional discussion between herself, her father, a few other people who were around, and um, 
that was basically the, the last time I saw her in that entity and in, in that, com in that um, just, you know, in a personal way. And you said, haven't you, that it's one of the bitterest regrets you have. I mean, I don't think Do anybody you remember, can... I think, sorry, Richard, there was a particular moment you said when she walked away and looked back at you, which still haunts you to this day. Could, yeah, could you share that? She, she walked out the front door with her father, turned around, said, I love you, and said goodbye. And I felt a certain kind of way. I felt like that was the goodbye. I had no idea what was going to happen after that. I had no um, information about the legal things that were going on and what was to come after that. And I think things got a little bit worse after that, a lot worse. Hmm. I was going to ask you, before that happened, um, you, you found that she was desperate to connect with ordinary life. Mm. She'd had this extraordinary uh, series of experiences from the time she was 10, actually, when she was on the TV talent show. And you found that, that increasingly, in a very erratic, random way, she would approach complete strangers and basically try and get into their lives. Didn't, didn't she join a, a bunch of surfer dudes on Malibu Beach, just walked up to them and basically wanted to spend all her time with them? Well, that story is interesting. That's after the head shaving incident. Um, she just wanted friends. The problem with Britney having friends is a lot of people wanted to be friends with Britney for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is Los Angeles. It's a small town. It's, it's a small town at that time of year. Those particular people on that day were very, very nice gentlemen who took care of her. They called me and I came and picked her up. Um, but, you know, I had my own life at the time, so when I would go away, I would see things on the news and I would see her with people that I've never met or never seen. And it kind of worried about, worried me because I feel like at that time, people in, you know, that Hollywood circle were taking advantage of her mm. Do you think she, she was seeking out some ordinary in a very extraordinary yeah. life? She was going up to people just to hang out with them and chat to them, sort of craving ordinary. Maybe you could share your thoughts on that as well. Exactly, exactly. And exactly. I... And, that, and that's... Initially, that's how we got along, because in her, I found just somebody who wanted to have fun. She's so funny and fun, and that's how we clicked right away. And she was looking for normal friendships, but... I mean, how hard is it? I mean, how mm. easy it is to for Britney Spears to find a normal friendship in Los Angeles, you know? Yeah, and it was just it was just after happen. that that incident, actually. Um, I mean, people were reaching out to her. Didn't Mel Gibson make a fairly extraordinary phone call to her? We we um, well, I got a lot of uh, interesting phone calls during that time. There's a lot of people who wanted to help. Yeah, and. Their hearts were in the, in the right place, but it's, just, it, it's too chaotic at the time. A lot of people thought they could help, like, or they could do this, they could do that. All I need, like I've heard a million times, all I need is five minutes with her and mm. everything will be okay. But that's not, that's not how life works, you know. And what did Mel Gibson offer in terms of help? Well, I'm not too sure, because I, at that point, I got out of the picture. Um, apparently, it was in the press later. Um, he just wanted to uh, provide her guidance of some sort. OK. So the book is out. Will you be reading it? What do you feel about her releasing it? Do you think she's got better chapters ahead now? I don't know if I'll be reading it. Um, I hope she's fully behind it. I hope she, she's supporting it. Um, it's quite personal, so I think it is her own story. Um, but if it is, I think it's a good thing. What do you think will become of her? As we said at the beginning, she's in her 40s now. Where do you think she'll be in 10 years? Um, hopefully just happy. <laughs> just happy. 
And I always say that I would love to see her perform again because she's a perfectionist. Yeah. All right, and so. she loves to perform. But like, I, like I've said in the past, she needs to perform at her own, um, at her own control when she wants to. Absolutely. All right, well, so fantastic. You. Fantastic to hear from you. I think we all agree with you that to be happy for her would be wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you.